Well, it's like torture, actually being innocent and sitting there knowing the state of Illinois wanted to kill me for something that I didn't do. And so what, what, what is life like in there, what, on, on death row as opposed to, you know, in the general prison population, what is life like? Life is, the monotony is, is maddening. Mm -hmm. You're in a cage 23 hours a day. You're let out of that cage for an hour a day to exercise briefly and take a shower and you're chained up and put right back in that cage. How are you treated? Are you treated any differently there? You're treated like the worst of the worst. Un not worthy of living. That's why Literally. they keep you in that cage. That's why they keep the chains on you. Mm. Did you always uh, harbor hope that you would uh, get out, get off death row? Or were there times when you just thought, this is going to happen, I'm going to die? I lost every state appeal in Illinois. It wasn't until I reached the court of last resort before I finally had some semblance of justice. Mm. And there were times of despair when I'd prayed to God, just let me die in my sleep. Spare my family any more of this turmoil. Mm. But Jesus continued to let me live. And 12 years on death row and seven, over 17 years total, I did five and a half of a life sentence mm. after I was removed from death row. That's why I believe that Troy Davis deserves a commutation of this death sentence to give him the opportunity to prove his innocence, the same opportunity that I had. You, you, you had exactly the same situation, too. You, you had execution date set, didn't you? When, when, when that news Ex is brought to absolutely. you. Absolutely. What, 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 I, can't imagine, Abs I can't imagine for a guilty person what that's like, for an innocent person, when you get that date. And, and, and mentally, you, you have a concrete potential end to your life. Exactly. You know that the, this system is like a huge wheel and it just grinds you up in it. When you get that formal piece of paper that states that you'll be put to death on a certain date at a certain time by lethal injection, it's very surreal. You realize the state is intent on murdering you on the testimony of two alleged eyewitnesses who were wholly unworthy of belief and who had recanted many times, just like the seven witnesses in Troy Davis's case. Yeah, yeah. If that's not reasonable doubt, then what is? Were you um, always against the death penalty? I come from a conservative farm background family in uh, Illinois, and I always believed that they look guilty on TV when they march them into the courtroom. Of course, mm. I was naive. Mm. I believe a uh, heinous crime should have been uh, resulted in a death penalty. But now, I don't believe that because they throw a lot of innocent people in the mix. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I wonder too, you know, combined with your uh, life without parole uh, and your time on death row, I think it was 17 years, three months, three weeks of wrongful imprisonment. How, how do you adjust to life outside after that? Well, when you have a third of your life that's basically erased, mm. you have to start over. Seven years ago, I, b I began to start over again. And it's just like somebody, it was like going to a bookstore and buying a good novel, and you see over 17 chapters missing once you get to the middle of it. Mm. That's how I feel in my life. There's a huge hole, there always will be, because that was taken from me unjustly. It's ironic in a way, too, that these cases uh, only ever seem to uh, come to public light and, and, and uh, uh, discussed fully at, at really the, the, the death knell. Exactly. Yeah. You can release an innocent man from prison. I'm living proof of that. But you can't release him from the grave.